There was an advertisement in the Berkshire Chronicle. It, it just said, "Want is somebody interested in radio?" Now I was a very practical person. Uh, I, for, for my uh, Christmas presents uh, in, at a very early stage, I've been given a Meccano set and a fret work out for it and so on. So I was very practically minded, and I. When I was older, I used to make amplifiers and radio sets and so on. So that sounded ideal. And I wrote off. And to my amazement, I got a letter back with BBC, written on the BBC heading, saying, well, I come in for an interview. Well, the, they were actually installing a transmitter opposite the town hall. It was part of a, 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 a lot of transmitters all over the country, low power transmitters, because uh, the war being on, they didn't want enemy planes homing in on a, a transmitter as they would have done. So if any planes came over, there was a system whereby the transmitter, which was nearest to them, closed down, and after they'd gone past it, they opened up again. And Ridding was getting one of these, and he asked me just one question. He said, "Have you heard of Ohm's law?" And I said, well, "Yes, E over A equals R." And uh, I don't think anybody had answered the question before. He said, "Well, you got the job." <laughs> it would be very different nowadays, <laughs> I must say. And anyway, I w was part of the I was what they called a youth in training in those days. And it was, I entered a totally different world, really, because b before the war, at the beginning of the war, most people who were engineers in the BBC, they really, most of them were ex-naval telegraphists or something like that, because they were the only people who knew anything about, about radio. And so you met an entirely different sort of person. One day I was on... Um, shift, it was a payday, it was a Wednesday, and the, the transmitter was actually at the very top of this building. Um, and, th and the thing about it is, it really was the top, because if you climbed out the window, there was a flat roof, and I can remember always being worried because the cement on between the bricks had dried off, and you could actually lift the bricks up at the top of the building. Um, and anyway, we, it was this payday, and, and at the bottom of the building, there was a restaurant called a British restaurant. Um, there was a sound of a low-flying aircraft not very far away. And somebody went to the window and they said, gosh, it's a door near. And we, we started to say, oh, don't be silly. And then suddenly there was a string of bombs dropped. Um, and I can remember really dying about, well, there's four bombs. It, it, it hit, first of all, um, the arcade went down. Opposite the, there used to be an arcade, anywhere that's still there, opposite the town hall, and then another one. And then, because it was going very fast, and it was trying to get rid of its bombs because it was being chased back to Germany, the bombs came at, at, at a very sharp angle and it blew the bottom of our um, building, building away, and all, all the building collapsed underneath us. Um, so we were very lucky, and then the next bomb was, was by the town hall. And I remember, as I say, I, I felt as if I died. Every time I started to get up, the, the other bomb got closer and closer. Um, and I can remember climbing down, the, there was a staircase that went down, fortunately attached to the wall all the way down, and that was still u usable but very rickety. And I remember climbing down, and everybody in the in, in, the, in the restaurant that disappeared amongst the rubble. And the first person I saw was a, was a girl who'd lost both legs and was just lying there. And then I, I was climbing over the rubble and I can remember a hand coming up and it was a man's hand. And he had his false teeth in his hand. He was trying to save his false teeth. Um, and it was, well, it was, it was um, not a very nice experience, but I, I, again, I was very lucky, you know, we were all very lucky we, we, we escaped. But what I do remember also about it was that um, 
I hadn't realised quite how covered in, in dust I was. And, and uh, later on, I had rang my parents to say I was all right. Uh, because you know, no telephones in those days. And, and so they, uh, I hadn't realised how much time had gone past and they were, thought I'd been killed in it as well. I can remember getting on the bus and nobody sat anywhere near me and I couldn't think why. And it, I realised afterwards when I saw myself in the mirrors because I was so covered in dust, they thought, I thought I was a, a navvy or something who had a particularly dirty job. <laughs>